right here. This isn't exactly what first came through my window. But it's called a Brazilian shrew mouse. Highest metabolism of any animal in the world, by the way. Can you imagine that running through your apartment? Hmm. <laughs>
at all. You know, this thing about um, no one seeing a shrew or a mouse in my apartment, I mean, uh, these guys never around at night. They're never around two, three, four o'clock in the morning. I mean, uh, I'll give you an example. If you had a pet skunk, people would say to you, you don't have a pet skunk because they'd never see the skunk. The skunk could be hiding under the couch, right? It'd be rolled up in the, in the closet. And people leave, and out comes the skunk. It's the same with mice. I mean, why would, why would a mouse, why would the, a grand mouse show themselves to like the the peons that come to my apartment? So, have you experienced any uh, problems with your friends since you've discovered the show? <laughs> well, they 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 don't believe me. They don't believe there's a shrew behind my stove. That uh, Howie guy, he came here one day and he was all, you know, like he was really had an attitude and he was like pulling furniture out and said, see Dave, there's no mice there. See Dave, there's no, there's no shrew. This shrew has, um, I, I don't know how to explain it without going back to a hospital ward, but he has these intuitive telekinetic kind of powers. And if you, right now, are thinking, if you're even thinking, I'm going to go and look behind the stove for the shrew. The shrew is not behind the stove. He will either vaporize or he will scurry to another area. He may levitate up above the stove and maybe hover somewhere up here. But he will not just wait for you to see him. You are not worthy of seeing my shrew. I have feel sorry for this guy. I'm, these mice and uh, rodents we he's talking about don't exist. I, I don't believe... It's kind of weird. He has a weird things going on in his apartment. There's no such things these kind of rodents be here these days. It's very rare and it's impossible to be into a city, into an apartment building going uh, all the way up to the second floor, third floor, whatever. Uh, it's quite amazing. So I feel so for the guy. Gee. Okay, I met Dave Evoy uh, several months back, and he he told me he was a filmmaker, and I had no no reason to doubt his word. And he did show me some footage of some some things that he had shot, but he, he kept claiming that a shrew came into his apartment, and I think this is uh, a very rare occurrence in New Westminster. I, I, I don't know what to make of it, really. So how how did you endeavor to make a film about Mr. Evoy if you just passed him off as kind of like uh, the victim of Tom Shrewry? Well, uh, Mr. Evoy is uh, a fascinating character. He has many facets to his personality. He's uh, well, he makes shrew faces every now and then, and I, I'm not quite sure what he's getting at, but uh, it's like sometimes I believe him, and sometimes I doubt him, but nevertheless, I think he's a fascinating human being, and he's worthy of uh, documenting this, this on film.
I always wondered why was I put on this earth, you know? And I know now why why I was put on this earth. Yes. And that's to uh, communicate the, the love, the kindness, the justice, uh, the law of shrewdery. The law of shrewdery. The law of shrewdery. Yeah. Okay. What does this law consist of? Um, it takes all the all the Judeo-Christian beliefs and kind of gnaws them down to size. You know, that's the thing. Is it, instead of ten commandments, there's like six. Um, all the verbosity of uh, Judeo-Christian belief is just it's just chewed and gnawed down to size. I see. I see. So it's a a condensing of the uh, Judeo-Christian tradition. Yeah. Um, a clarification. Well, there's a few additions. <clears throat> there's a few additions. Um, one time, um, Shreddy was on the counter, and he doesn't talk to me. This is, you know, that's not true if, you, if you've heard or read that. He doesn't talk to me. He communicates to me kind of through, you know, mind channels. And, um, anyway, he said, uh, through my mind, he said, thou shalt chew. Okay, thou shalt chew. And I think that's a beautiful commandment. Because we always nibble and we always chew. I mean, we're so much like rodents. I mean, just the fact of that nine to five activity that we do. What is it called? It's called a rat race. Who better to lead us through the rat race than the highest being of the rats and small mice, the shrew? Um, there's just a few things I'd like to say about uh, Dave. Um, I think he's genuinely a nice person. Um, and yet you trash him. You sit on camera and you trash him. Well, um... What is his mother going to think when he sees this? When she sees this piece of film and you're all going on and he's on about rodents? Well, like I said, Dave is a sweet guy. But these rodents uh, that he's obsessed about are really pulling him down. And he, he's not just pulling himself down, he's pulling everyone he knows down. He, I, I personally had to go into a psychiatric group home because of Dave's obsession with uh, rodents. I went over to Dave's place and uh, Dave tied me to the couch and he uh, he had uh, had me watch for rodents and um, also uh, Dave's mother came over and uh, like I said Dave's a great guy just a wonderful guy um, but he tied his mother to the couch and uh, he had his mother watch for mice. Okay, I'd just like to ask you, uh, what is the difference between the shrew and the mice? Why do you fear the mice and not the shrew? Well, I'm, I'm comfortable with the shrew. Shrews don't seem to travel around in packs. They seem to be, you know, they be able to see like uh, they just come in ones. And I guess for mating, for mating that might be a problem. I'm a little worried about that because me and Shreddy are pretty close, and uh, Shreddy uh, is just such an amazing animal. I mean, sometimes he's just a little, little thing, you know, just a little bitty thing, like a half an ounce, and then. Sometimes he's uh, the Grand Shrew. He's like six, seven, eight, nine feet tall sometimes. Really? That tall? Mm-hmm. Now, 
that doesn't bother me. As, as weird as that sounds, like because of this this connection that I have with with the shrew and and how it's really increasing my my reservoir of spirituality and everything, I, um, I feel like I'm doing the work of God through a rodent. Yeah. And the mice, have, I don't see. I don't understand their place. I I don't understand why the hell they're here. I I don't like them. I I consider them vermin. Are but Shreddy says the answer will, Pardon me? Are they destructive? Not so far. Okay. Um, but you see, where, where I'm at peril is right after Kevin Borges' uh, tragic death and the mice entered my apartment. I thought I was, I was pursuing one of the intruding mice and I pulled the couch out of the way and I grabbed a hold of the tail and I had a big book and I was, I was gonna, I was gonna kill the mouse. And it was Shreddy. Ah. And I scared him so bad, you know, I scared him so bad and, and, and it's been a while. Um, I've only seen Shreddy a couple of times in the last few months and he, he's just teeny. He's just a teeny little shrew. So he basically shrunk from your attack. I'm Shreddy's Judas. I think that's the dilemma that I have right now, is I feel that I am... I thought I was his messenger, but I think I'm, I'm Shreddy's uh, Judas. You know, it's funny seeing your friends, you know, like sit in front of the camera. This, you're no different. Could you look at me for a second, buddy? I mean, looking through that bloody camera. You're no good with the goddamn thing anyway. Now, and you too, man. I understand all of you, you here. you're mistrustful of filmmakers. Mistrustful? This guy come in with pink pants and a big fat ass. He come in, he filmed me for three days. He had me saying the most ridiculous stuff. He said, just go for it, Dave. Just go for it. Say that. Say this. Do a shrew face. Go like... Do that. That's so funny. Everybody will like it. So he misrepresented you. Yeah, and I got a feeling that you're just going to do it a different way. You've got all my friends, my pals here, man. And uh, I see bits and pieces of this thing. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. And uh, I'm not into mice. You know, and I'm just, that's, that's, uh, I got like some nervous ticks, you know. Um, and when you keep pestering me, pestering me about bloody rodents, I mean, you know, like, um, there's not much I can do about it. I mean, I just got this thing. Really? My name's Gary Mitchell. I'm here today to talk about uh, David Eboy and his concept of mice and shrews running in through his apartment. Personally, you know, I think that these mice are his pets. You know, there's cheese everywhere around, all over his apartment, you know, like, you just walk in there and you trip over the damn stuff. Now, another thing is, he's got to, he says, he's, he's been talking about this dream, this dream that he's been having, you know. He's strapped in this chair. You ever see the movie Clockwood Orange? Yeah. You remember that guy that is strapped in this chair in the jail? and he's got his eyes glued open and he, they're watching nuclear holocaust and war and Hitler and... Yeah, uh, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell, yeah, exactly. But anyways, he's, he's in this dream and he's strapped in this chair and his eyes are glued open, you know, like wide, you know, and they're dropping eye, they're dropping eye tablets, glycerin and water into his eyes and keeps on having this dream that mice are dancing, fields and fields of mice are dancing across the screen. Well, what I make, I can't make anything out of it, you know. Do you have anything to do with Mr. Evoy, or could you comment perhaps on the cult aspect? Oh, of the, uh, I'm, I, I'm disassociating myself with him, you know, like he's, these guys are crazy, you know. They, they take over your mind, your soul. The stuff about, uh, you know, 
you got to laugh. You know, you got to laugh. What a bunch of crap. Shrew covenants. Covenants of the mouse. I mean, is this why you're pointing that thing at me right now? Because you think you're going to find... What the hell is a covenant of a mouse? You think we get speeches from Shreddy the Shrew all the time? He gets up on top of the stove and gives us a squeaking soliloquy? I don't know. Of course, that's 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 readily apparent. Well, yeah. So I was curious about the uh, the death of Kevin Borges. Well, he came and did a film here, March. And I understand that the RCMP interrogated you for 26 hours. Oh, that was that was that was absolutely ridiculous. They said, due to my anger to his film about me and the way he misrepresented me and marketed that, that film, he, he was apparently, the, the, the way he treated me was a motive for, his, for me killing him. Um, I never killed Kevin Borkus. Kevin Borkus was found savagely gnawed to death in his sleep. Okay? They don't know. Um, when the police had me in that little room playing the good cop, bad cop thing, they did, um, uh, what do you call them, you know, like the teeth, uh, you know, they, like they, they take a plate of your teeth and measure it to the wounds and all that, and they didn't, they didn't hardly match. So they suspected you of knowing They still do. I'm not surveillance. To death. Yeah, I'm under surveillance. I ended up in a psychiatric hospital after that. Uh, you know, I thought it was annoying with, with that guy asking me questions about shrews and do I think I'm a shrew and do I love my shrew, do I take my shrews for walks? And here's these nurses with these little bonnets on their head. And you know, they're, they're, they're not as kind as they like to make out because every once in a while you'd see one of them, eh? And they'd ask me a question and they'd do that at me. Really? Yeah. So they'd say, are you feeling better today, David? How uh, was your breakfast today, David? You know, I, I, I did not find that funny. I did not find, like, I put, I, I put my heart into that film. Because it's, it's very rare that people come to do a documentary about you. I mean, they don't, yes. like, go door to door looking for you. I met this guy. He said he seemed to know a lot about movies. So I'd like to make a movie about you talking about movies. All right? I see the premise had nothing to do had with nothing to do with shrews. Okay. I kind of mentioned like a kind of an off-handed remark that I thought the shrew behind my stove was God. You know, it just sort of slipped out. But you say, you say that um, he hasn't been lucky to catch him on film, and you have all these people parade in front of the camera and say that they don't exist. So which is it, you know? Um, what are you making a film about? Is it in search of the mighty shrew? Or is it making fun of some poor bastard that's uh, delusional? Uh, my intent is never to make fun of Dave. I just want to show the truth. And the truth may be that there are no shrews or mice. And how, how long did you spend in the psychiatric facility? Uh, four weeks. Four weeks? Four weeks. Um, they gave me a bunch of pills and stuff and uh, they thought, they said I was delusional. Did they, have you heavily tranquilized? I, yeah, well, apparently, um, I could barely get a little squeak out, you know. When I so you don't believe the little fallacy that these so-called friends of David's are doing, sitting there saying how they have nothing to do with him? Has that been? They're all involved in it. It's I can't believe it. You know, the, these people here are talking about not being involved in it. They're involved. Did you? So you think, uh, Mark, that it's not possible for a shrew or a mouse? It's very Climb rare. It's very rare. Floor. 
the, the guy says, uh, he told me on his, uh, his thought saying, suction suit to the ceiling there. There's no such thing. You can't go in ceilings. It's impossible. Gee. I can't, ex I try to explain to this guy that it is impossible going along the, the roof ceiling. I see the roof is on top on top of that. But the ceiling is impossible. There's no way you could do it. It's scary like scurry. Scurry, scurry, scurry. Scurry, why, 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 mother, mother. Could I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. How does a mouse or a shrew get into your top cupboards? Well, they have to open up with the noses. But it being, it's kind of hard because it's, it's slippery. Do they leap? Uh, no, they can't do that. They're, they're not strong enough to do that yet. It's, it's not quite like that. No. Oh, shrew. Shrew, mother, mother. Shrew, mother, 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 you take humankind in this hand, and light as a feather shreddy in that hand. Shreddy the shrew. Okay? It's the, what, the balance of scales of justice? No. It's the plummet of humankind. Shreddy is light and fluffy. He loves and he cares for everyone. And, and humankind has compassion for no one. So that's how the scales start to balance. Now Shreddy now, is, is it's so light and fluffy here that he can add a few mice onto this scale. All right? Now Shreddy, this is, this is the dilemma that Shreddy's under right now, and I, this is why I'm the messenger. Is Shreddy has now leaped off that scale, and he's trying so hard to save the decline of humankind. Really? You know? And, and that's where it is. That's where humankind is right now. You see, the, the, the joy that I get out of all this now, it, it all sort of made more sense to me, is I am the shrew's messenger. What would I have to do to see the shrew? You see the shrew through me. You cannot see the shrew. The shrew is not with us now. Okay. God is not with us now. Just me as the shrew's messenger. See, now I hear about you saying that Dave created this cult with Shreddy. I'm going, what? I don't know where he got that from. You know, he probably got that from, from, I don't know, forget the guy's name that left us. Mr. Borkus? No, no. Um, uh, shit, he changed his name so we couldn't find him anymore. Oh, the guy we know as Gary? Yes, him. I'm going, it's, uh, maybe he thought it was a cult because of the shrew dance. I just want to make it clear to you that don't People I... fear what they don't understand, right, Howie? Right. Like, what we did the dance for was for a hoot, to have fun. No, I see people having fun different other ways. One way is dancing. One way is, I don't know, uh, maybe well, going out to the bar or something. But I'm going to say there's nothing Nothing is a cult. If we were a cult, Dave would be after me right now. See, I, I left because I was afraid. And I'm letting you speak on your own free will, aren't I, Howie? As you can hear, yes, I am. No, would you shut up? No pressure. <laughs> There's no pressure. Just you say whatever you want. What I want to say is Dave is okay. There's nothing wrong with him. There's no shrew shrewery going on here. Nothing mousy or anything at all. He's a go okay guy. I left on my own free will. Now the meaning of life is basically fear. It is fear. It is fear. It's, it's, it's to fear so much 
that there's no longer fear. I see. So to hate so until there's love. So fear begets more fear. Pretty much. Um, you have to gnaw away at your fear. You have to nibble and chew and, and, and just get down to the bare essentials. And when you get down to the bare essentials, then you're able to build up and make all those same mistakes again. Mm -hmm. And that is life. I see. Strip to the bare essentials, build up and fail, and strip and fail and chew and gnaw. That actually makes good sense to me. Thank you. Um, I've had some time to think about Dave's situation and I, I really believe it is possible for a shrew or a mouse to uh, reach the second floor apartment. I do. Um, I just like to say that Dave probably can host the best dinner party for mice and shrews in New Westminster. But it's all a joke, isn't it? I don't mean to butt in on the interview, but it's all like a, like a little joke. It's like, we're not into shrews. The stuff is a shrew in my apartment. That's it, eh? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, yeah, there are shrews and mice in Dave's apartment. Hey, uh, Dan, uh, you know, you did your little film. Um, yes. I think you understand it's all a little bit better now. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You know, like, yeah, we are having some problems friendship-wise and stuff, but it's got nothing to do with, like, shrews and mice. And, no. You know, cause no. could you just look at the camera there? And, sure. And, and say how it's got nothing to do with uh, shrews and mice? These guys have no, no connection to shrews and mice whatsoever. So basically you were misled by... by by what you heard before and what you saw before, you didn't realize that it was a joke. Right? Yeah, uh, uh, the Kevin Barkas film, I didn't realize what was going on. Okay. And again, you're not feeling pressured in any way to... No. ...to uh, speak or anything? No, not at all. Good, that's good, and you mm -hmm. feel natural and it's just flowing, right? Yeah. Shreddy is love. Shreddy is, is love. Shreddy is love. <coughs> shreddy, shreddy is love and Shreddy is kindness. And I, I can't measure up to Shreddy. I've tried. I get down on my haunches and I try to measure up to Shreddy, but Shreddy is so much more uh, a compassionate uh, entity than I could ever hope to be. And, and, and I think... Uh, Shreddy, shreddy, shreddy. That's all I got to say. Shrew, shrew, shreddy, shreddy. Why, why, why? Why, why, why? Mother, 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 shrew. Shrew, shreddy, shreddy, shreddy. Okay, thank you very much. Mother, 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 mother. It's been a pleasure uh, shrew, talking to you. Shrew, 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 shrew. Mouse. Shreddy, Shreddy. Why, 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 why? Mother, 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 Shrew. Shreddy, Shreddy. Mother, mother, mother. I don't think you understand what I'm saying to you. I'm saying mother, Shrew, the Shrew mother. Shrew, why, mother? What does why mean? What does mother mean? What does shrew mean? Shrew is mother. Why is shrew mother? Because it's shrew. Well, I've, I've just been thinking about uh, all of this that has come out during the filming of this film and thinking about the shrews and, and, and David and uh, the divinity of Shreddy, it, it's, it's all beginning to make sense to me now. It's, uh, I see the logic behind it, and uh, I, I really am starting to feel a sense of spirituality. 
So you think David may be doing divine work? Yes, I think so. I think he may be doing God's work on earth. And he's channeling... Ah, but Dan... Dan? Yes? You mean the shrew's work on earth? Yes. Well, God, shrew, mother, mother, shrew... Shreddy. Shreddy. Shreddy, mother, mother. Why, 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 shred, no, no, shreddy, shreddy, mother, 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 shreddy, 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 mother, mother, shreddy, God, love, shrew. Shreddy, God, love, Shrew. Shreddy, God, love, Shrew. Take over, Dan. Let the Shrew take over your body. Shreddy, love, God, Shrew. This is from the holy page of Shrew. Hallelujah. First, there was man. Oh. <laughs> then there was woman. Love, baby. Love. And then there was the Shrew, David. And God named this Shrew Shreddy, saying unto God, unto Shreddy the Shrew, Stop thy creeping. Stop, stop thy creeping. Stop. You see? Stop that stop that creeping. Yes. Stop. You're not, you're not, you see, what he's saying there is he's saying you're not like a little rodent. You're 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 the worker for God. You're the little furry worker. Yes, you are the messenger of God. Mm -hmm. Please go on, Dan. Go on. Let it take over let, let the essence. Let the let all the fresh herbs and spices. The let all the grasses and all the, the seven let it all herbs fly. and spices. Yeah, let it all fly down. Go ahead now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shrew, shrew. Shrew. Then the God commanded the shrew, hidest thou in the meadow, shrew. and be not seen. Shrew. Be my eyes, and observeth their inevitable plight. Shrew. And this plight was mighty. Shrew. It was a mighty plight. Incredible in its scope. Scope. And the shrew hideth. And he watcheth carnage and sin. True, true. And anger and apathy. Shreddy, shreddy. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Soon, shreddy, humankind shreddy. Oh, brought God. great fear to Shreddy oh, the Shrew's true. heart. A fear that was true, so massive, true, true. it stopped him in his tracks. Oh, all of it's true. Then there was centuries which passed without another word from God. And then... Tell the people, Danny. Tell them. Then, after nearly oh. being overrun by an earth-churning moving machine man. in the sacred meadow near Eden, oh, God. Shreddy the Shrew hideth between... You don't have to look at the words, Dan. Two rocks. Tell us the words, Dan. Betwixt two rocks Betwixt. he hideth. Not one, no, not three. No, no, not three. No, not three, no, not, not shreddy, five, not, not six or seven. Not shreddy, no. Two. Betwixt two rocks he no, hideth. Yes. And then say he the words. Exclaimed, Dan. Say the words, Dan. Thou art with me, God. Thou art with me. Say the words, Dan. Feel and the then words. He said unto Shrew. Oh Shrew. You said Shrew, Dan. Hold it, Dan. You said Shrew. True, true. Lord, true. my meadow is being ravaged, thou. Oh, true. My shreddy, home shreddy. is but oh, earth true. and scars. True, true. I beggeth thou. Beggeth thou. Give me some direction. True, true. Just a little direction. Oh, shreddy, shreddy. Give why, me direction. Why, why? Giveth me this Give it, direction. Give it, then. Give me a Give small oh. inkling. A small inkling of oh, shreddy, direction. Shreddy, yes. Helpeth me thou. Helpeth, helpeth then. Helpeth God's God. Help voice true. roared in shreddy's oh, shreddy, ears. Shreddy, shreddy, shreddy. And the voice shreddy, 
caused the shrew's long snout to rumble. A rumbling, a mighty rumbling was heard in the shrew's snout. Shrew, shrew. And God said, Go with to a city called New Westminster. New Westminster. New Westminster. And in this city, climbest thou through the window. Climbers, the patio climbers, climbers. window. The patio of window. Oh. David Evoy. All I feel it, Dan. I'm it quivering with your words. It is on the second words. level of the f oh. this building, not the first level, not the third level. Oh no no no! The second yes, level. Yes yes yes. True true. And true. As you go into true. the patio window of oh, David Evoy, creepeth true. thou. I can't even hold the camera. I'm just oh, true. Creepeth thou true, true. mightily. True. Carefully. But with great purpose. Oh, yes. And then when you reach the second level from the ground, seeketh this window, and seeketh this David Evoy. David. David Evoy. And then speaketh my words through him. Through David you shall speaketh the words of God. And this shall be a sign to all people. And this shall be a sign unto man, and unto woman, and unto humankind, if this shall be the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.